and our panel have more than a word or two to say on the fixture that took place at the Aviva Stadium on Wednesday. Friendlies rarely grab the headlines, but the meeting of Shamrock Rovers in Liverpool has certainly exercised the keyboards of football fans across the country. Now, before we talk about it in studio, let's hear what some of the fans who attended the game had to say before kickoff. So here we are, Lansdowne Road, pre-match, and it feels like a big game is going on. I suppose it is, because there's 40,000 people due in the stadium very, very shortly indeed. That's because Liverpool are taking on Shamrock Rovers. Problem is, I suppose, most of the fans are going to be supporting Liverpool. Only 5,000 Hoops fans will be in the stadium. So we're asking, is that a good thing or a bad thing for Irish football? An awful lot of Irish people just follow English football, sit in the bar stills. We go every week, as do other club fans, and the League of Ireland is a good product. But unfortunately, People are only interested in the hype of the Premier League. But get out and support the league every week, week in, week out, from Cork to Galway to Finn Harps to Dundalk to Shamrock Rovers. Well, I'm hoping for a good victory, a good performance, and uh, come on the pool. Irish fans, we want them to come to see Rovers. Because the Liverpool fans are going to be away. We want Irish fans to come to see Rovers. League of Ireland, that's what we want. Oh, they're not a bad team at all. It's good to see the pool playing the local team from Dublin. I'm just at the point to see all the Liverpool fans and not too many League of Ireland fans, to be honest. I could rather see more League of Ireland fans supporting our country's football rather than English football. But... What do you know about Shamrock Rovers? I mean, obviously a Liverpool fan for 40 years. Have you been a League of Ireland fan at any of those times? Not much, no, but i watch a little bit and they're not a bad side. And I won't put them down anyway, that's for a fact, you know. I'm Irish, they're Irish. I was at a League of Ireland game about 10 years ago down at St. Pat's in the Lash and Rain and there was me and about 40 other people there. So, you know, it probably has a bit to go facilities-wise. Shamrock Rovers, I think, of a nice place out in Tallaght now. But um, I think the standard of the rest of the league probably just needs to lift it a little bit and, um, you know, maybe that'll catch the imagination of the wider public. The fans from Liverpool here tonight don't go every week. We go week in, week out, like every other club in the country. And that's what they're missing. They look at, at the telly, we go and see our club, and we say the linesman got it wrong tonight, the referee was poor, but by God, it was entertainment. They don't really matter. We matter in this country because we go week in, week out, like every other club in the league. Lansdowne Road and the fans have come out in their thousands, mostly clad in red shirts, it has to be said, but Shamrock Rovers fans too. So commercially, the event has been a success. And for that, you've got to say kudos to the promoters. Having said that, wouldn't it be great if it was like this all of the time? Well, 4-0 uh, finished, as you know, to Liverpool, and it was a friendly fixture that allowed some Liverpool fans catch a glimpse of one or two of their heroes and uh, made Shamrock Rovers a few quid, and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Our Dermot Keeley... Is there? I know it's not the sort of uh, fixture that really appeals to you, is it? It's absolute shocker. 42,000 morons going to watch Liverpool's reserve team. But they're Liverpool fans. Aren't they entitled to go along and see them? How many, how many fans of Liverpool get to watch the reserve team? 42,000 people, 42,500 people. So do you think, in a way, they were sold a pub? Absolutely. And they deserve to go. They deserve to pay the money. That they deserve anything to get, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's, I do not understand how... Irish people cannot support an Irish league. I, I really, it's beyond me, it baffles me. But if you parachuted half of that, or most of that crowd into Liverpool, they wouldn't be able to find a way to Anfield. OK, but uh, I mean, aren't people entitled to support a team in England, a team in Spain, a team wherever they want, along with a team in, in the Republic of Ireland? Absolutely. Where, where it goes hand in hand, that's perfect. I have no objection to that at all. Many people support the league here and also support uh, English sides because of the uh, Sky television, that's fine. But the majority of those people that you heard there sporting Liverpool don't go to League of Ireland matches. And that's, a, that's an awful shame. But what about the money that the fixture made for Shamrock Rovers? That's beneficial for the league. Brilliant. I have no qualms of that at all. I have no qualms of having to play those games because that's, the people in Shamrock Rovers done their work right. That, that I don't know how much they made, 100, 150 grand. I don't know what, what was made, what money they made. That money has gone back into Irish football. They're, they're progressive as it stands. They have a, a reserve team, and I don't, I have no problem with with, with the club itself uh, holding that matches. People have to make money, and we beg, bar and steal to, to keep this league running. Yeah, uh, Richie, do you think Dermot's points are valid in relation to the supporters who went along there? Because obviously an awful lot of those supporters support Liverpool alone and they don't follow Irish football. So should issue be taken with them? No. Um, there are Irish people who liked football who showed up to a match that the team they support played. Some of them might go to Anfield, some not. It's their own business. 
the notion that Irish people, just by virtue of their Irishness, should support Irish football, I think that's the point Dermot just made. That ignores then any discussion on things like we mentioned, facilities or the standard of play or how clubs are run or how attractive the thing is. If you simplify it to, well, they're Irish, therefore go. I think it, 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 it's far more complex than that. People find far more reasons to attach themselves to a football team other than the fact that, well, they play in this country. Stewie, it begs the question, why don't people have a greater affiliation with Irish football clubs? Why do you think that issue is there? I think it's, it's all around the promotion of the English Premiership. Um, we've seen in crowds in League of Ireland in the 60s, early 70s, you know, we're talking 20, 30,000 people going to League of Ireland games. But isn't that when there were then, very few other options in terms of yeah, entertainment yeah, for absolutely. people? Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about it in the, you know, the, the, the late 80s, the early 90s, since the introduction of the Premiership and the whole PR um, and the things that it's, it's gone to another level. And you see, you know, you go to the, to the airport on a Saturday morning and you'll see droves of people going to Scotland, England, whatever the case may be. But I'd, I'd have to agree, um, I think the issue is, agree with Darren, I think the issue is with supporters, I think it's the mindset. I think until that mindset changes, you're never going to see a difference. You're, go you're going to see those guys going to English Premiership games, to Scottish Premier League games, not supporting um, the Irish League, not even attempting to support the Irish League. And I'd, I'd actually even wonder how many of those Liverpool supporters actually genuinely go to Liverpool games. I don't think that's relevant. I don't think we should sit here and start Judging people for the amount of times they go to watch their team and, and to be critical of them for ignoring this league, the league in this country. This isn't even a professional league. If we're going to have a discussion about professional football and the facilities or the standard or all the things, then this country can't be a part of that conversation because there is not one professional football league in this country. Yeah, so there, there are when you're asking, when yeah. you're asking like, it's the PR stuff or the, or the marketing of, of the Premier League, if you removed all of that, this league still isn't good enough for a lot of people who like football. And as you said, people but, have choices. But they're but the, the, the 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 football. I accept totally that this league isn't a match for any league, for the Premier League or for the Spanish, uh, the Spanish league. Fine. But it's, it's our league. Well, so it's, why criticise people for not I supporting it? I, I, what I've already said, I don't object to them supporting. They can go if they. If you call the morons for going to the game the other night to watch Liverpool reserves. And you, that's not criticism. It's, it's the plain truth. You're going to pay to watch Liverpool. Brad Jones. I let him go in, in for what ten years ago in two matches he played. Now he's the only one who comes in. Okay, and so now you're he's mocking a, people no, he's for going the, to watch the club no, that they no, support. No. I said he was, if this league is so good, he's still two two games he played. It's a pink It's the only game I managed to let him, let him four goals. But Dermot, aren't, aren't there, many, aren't there very many what? issues and we're all uh, interested in the League of Ireland, we're all interested in the clubs doing better, but there are a number of issues that down through the years haven't been addressed. And people now, when they go to football matches, and yes, they're used to seeing that a big product, the Premier League, on mm. television, they expect better facilities for starters. I mean, the facilities in, in Ireland generally have stood still. I mean, shouldn't that be improved and addressed? That's a very that's simplistic because yes they have the, the facilities are poor grand because there's no money in the game because if you if you put money into into facilities unfortunately you don't put money into the team the team loses you get relegated you go into first division all those kind of things they're facts I'm not I am not saying that this league is on par with this other league what I'm saying is I don't understand why people pay, would pay money to go and watch basically a reserve team. 40, over 40,000 people. I do not see the logic of that. And the one man there says he was at a game 20 years ago, sometimes things haven't changed. How do you know if things haven't changed yet if you don't go? Yes, but Dermot, it's not just about the game. I mean, they're going to see the club. It's entertainment. It's an occasion. It's in a big stadium. There's a big crowd. There's a big atmosphere. Yeah, and you can't stall it to go to the toilet and make a cup of tea. That's what, I, that's, what the, that's what they're into now. That's where this is come from. Yes, it is. You're in here, you watch your telly, and you can go and stall it and go off, go back in and watch again. You don't miss any of the match. That's not football. You look at the football culture in this country, and to keep a bigger picture here, when I was a child, probably every, every child who, who likes football in this country, if you want to be a footballer when you grow older, your ambition is to leave this country. Yeah. Probably to England, maybe to Scotland, but you don't want to be here. In a lot of other industries, you leave the country because th things don't work out for you. It's the opposite in football. From a child, you want to leave. I would say the makeup of all the underage international squads at the moment are comprised of young lads who want to go to England. 
every member of the senior squad has left the country. It seems absurd then to turn around and mock supporters for neglecting senior football in this country when all the players do, the best coaches leave as well. There's no professionalism here. There's no sta it, it, it doesn't even, I say it again, it doesn't belong in a, in a conversation about professional football or to compare to England. But all, all standards are relative and I understand Dermot's point that uh, t uh, supporters here mm. can still assign themselves to an Irish club. I mean, we know, uh, I mean, we cover live games here in RTE. Mm. Some are good, so, some are bad. But how do you appeal to the families to get them going to League of Ireland games? What do we need to do? Well, take the rugby, for example. You look at the way the rugby's operated. You've got all the top rugby players, they're profiled for starters. You know, individual profile to appeal to younger, to younger kids. Okay, you've got the likes of the RDS for Leinster. It's a homely atmosphere. It's, it evolves around families. There's you know? a difference, though. Okay, well, look, that, there, that, there's, that, a, there's that, a massive that, difference. That's a starting point, Richie. The ha it has to start somewhere because at the moment, it hasn't started at all. Well, you're talking about Leinster. You know, We've we, we got to change the mindset of people who get on a plane, go over to Liverpool, go over to London or whatever it is, spend a whole day, spend a hell of a lot of money watching a game, watching a sport. Football, and like I say, they're entitled to do it, but we have to change that mindset. Can, can I just interrupt you there? Because here. we want to get a slightly different perspective. Because, I mean, it's hi historical that Irish people have an affiliation with clubs in England. And uh, maybe someone who can shed a little further light on why that is the case now is Dr. Brian Hanley, who's an historian and author. And he joins us on the line now. And he has a particular interest, of course, in, in football. Uh, Brian, many, many thanks for joining us this evening. First of all, uh, why does it appear that there is a natural connection between so many Irish soccer supporters and some of the big clubs like Manchester United and Liverpool? Well, I mean, I think the interesting thing about it is that it long predates television. It long predates the Premiership. Uh, there were people travelling from Dublin in the 1930s to see Everton, for example, who were probably the first English team to have a big Irish following. They were regarded in the 30s and 40s as something of an Irish team. So people, well before we had uh, airplane travel en masse, people were, were taking the ferry to see games in Liverpool and Manchester. And part of it is a cultural influence. I mean, we, we may not like the reason why it exists, but we do have very cl a very close relationship with Britain historically. And soccer was introduced here uh, by, British, by the British. And therefore, in urban areas, it was always a popular game. And many thousands of people from Ireland immigrated to Britain they tended to settle in urban areas where soccer was quite clearly the biggest game. It might not have been the biggest game in Ireland, but it was in Britain. And many of those people began to follow English clubs and they, you know, stayed in contact with their families. Some of their families came to England to join them. So you had this interaction anyway. Yeah. I mean, people talk about the support here for Manchester United. In 1948, Manchester United came to Dublin to play friendlies against Bohemians and Shelburne. 38,000 38, people saw them play Boas. 30,000 people saw them play Shells. They were captained at the time by Jackie Carey, of course, and that was important. But the fact was that the roots of United support here actually go back to the 1940s. They were already regarded in the 50s as the biggest cross-channel club in Ireland. So, so this support goes back well before you know, the glamour of the Premiership. It's something that a lot of Irish people, who at the same time would have followed very often League of Ireland clubs, also identified with English clubs as well. Uh, Brian, many thanks for uh, joining us and giving us that perspective on the issue. Uh, we heard there, Dermot... Immigration obviously played a role, and, and the issue of uh, our top players going over to England, playing their trade with Manchester United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, etc., would have had a significant impact on football fans here as well, wouldn't it? Absolutely. <clears throat> Immigration from, from Ireland, that's, that's, that would be a huge part because there's Irish colonies all, all over England. Actually, that's true. But we come back to this. These people that went last week didn't go and watch Liverpool. I could kind of understand if they had a full team out and they'd done quite well. But in fairness, were they, they to know? Listen, everybody, every, the dogs in the street, no, they're not going to pay. They had the World Cup on, the, and the matches over the end of the season. It's probably, was it called the Liverpool eleven? Yeah, I, I can't Nobody. understand why you're I think it was made clear that the World Cup uh, players who were destined for the World Cup weren't, weren't going to feature. Going I think that was made clear. You're getting bogged down with the team selection no, of I'm Liverpool saying... and saying that by, by virtue of putting out a weaker team than they would normally do in a full Premier League fixture, the people who went are, to use your words, morons. Yeah, and they all can't. They all can't. They, they, they went to watch... I haven't heard, match. in fairness, I haven't heard a, a huge amount of protests from the people who went supporting Liverpool, saying that they were sold a pup, to use your phrase, or con, to use your phrase. I think most people who bought a ticket bought on the understanding that they wouldn't see a best 11, and they were doing it in the hope of seeing their club in the first fixture following a Premier League title win. It didn't work out for that, but it doesn't mean 
They, didn't they were wrong to buy a ticket or wrong to go. They're fo You're mocking a football fan for going to watch his football team. I'm not, I'm not mocking That's anybody. Not, how do you I'm mock not, people I'm if this mocking, isn't mocking? I'm not mocking people. I'm saying it's, I cannot understand the mindset of somebody who will go and spend that amount of money to go and watch reserves. If you want to pe spend that amount of money and your, your favourite is Steven Gerrard or Gero or whatever you're going to call him, well, that's fine. But this, you're going out to watch a reserve match that the Liverpool, Liverpool fans themselves wouldn't go and watch. But it's typical Ireland. Okay, you take finally, anything, Cole. Anything. Second right. best doesn't make any difference. Finally, Stewie, if you were given 30 seconds to try and come up with a remedy to cure some of the ills of Irish football, what, what would you do? Well, certainly we need to generate an interest. We need, we need supporters. There needs to be a core group of supporters going to games. And you've you got to start from there. At the moment, that's not there. Um, one quick fix for me is summer soccer. I, I would seriously look at continuing with the summer soccer model. Yeah. I feel we should go back to a more traditional season and play into the mindset of those Liverpool supporters and try and get the, these guys to start going to games between August and between May when their mind is set on football. It's not set on Gaelic. It's not set on their holidays. It's not set on their barbecue on, on, on a Saturday evening or it's not set on going to a pub on a Friday after work. It's, 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 it's a mindset we switch off in the summer and I feel that could be a starting point. Now, there's a hell of a lot more to come from there, but there has to be a core supporter base so that financially clubs can have some sort of foundation and build from there. OK, well, needless to say, it is a debate that will rage on. And of course, we do welcome your comments, uh, particularly on Twitter and Facebook this evening. We'd certainly be interested to uh, hear what you all think of it.